Welcome back to Scream With Me. My name is Rusty. This is uh, my horror channel where I talk about my favorite horror movies and why I love them and why you should too. And um, yeah, so we are back now to talk about a little movie I love by a little guy I love called Catch Hell. Now, Catch Hell stars Ryan Philippe. His pronunciation, not mine. I used to call him Ryan Philippe. And then I used to call him Ryan Philippe. Like French, you know, or whatever. Well, it turns out that according to him, his name is pronounced Philip with a Canadian A. So, uh, Philippe. Ryan Philippe. So, this movie stars Ryan Philippe, and it was also directed by Ryan Philippe. This is his movie completely. It also stars Ian Bradford and Stephen Lewin, Stephen Lewis Grush, and it was also written by Ryan Philippe. So, he directed it, he wrote it, and wow, but I love this movie. Now, let's read the tagline. Uh, a fading Hollywood pretty boy gets taken and brutalized in Louisiana by two local men with his total ruination at heart. So, there you go. Um, Ryan plays, like he said, a famous actor who was really popular. He was, you know, a really popular actor, had been that way for 20 years. He had been a heartthrob, um, an A-list actor who felt that at the age of 40 that he was losing his touch and losing his fan base and he um, takes this role in a movie in Louisiana. Now, he goes down there and it's obviously like a B-movie. You know, um, he's going to star in a B-movie because as a fading actor, that's what you do. Um, now, what he doesn't know is that he has a stalker. There is this crazy Louisiana Cajun redneck type who, be in one of his past, you know, like years before, he had been somewhere making a movie, and this crazy Cajun's wife claimed that she had a one-night stand with this actor. And since he is crazy, he has been stalking him ever since. And his friend, he's got a friend, uh, it's like a cousin or a nephew, I think. I think they're family, but I'm not sure. Um, he is kind of a stalker of this character as well, but for a different reason. So he agrees to help him. So what they basically do is pretend to be, um, you know, they find out when he's coming closest to make a movie, and uh, they pretend to be the transportation. Um, and they basically kidnap him. They stop at the motel, the hotel he's staying at, and they pick him up, and they kidnap him. And they take him out to the Louisiana gator-infested swamp, and uh, chain him up on a bed um, with the intent, the, the, the crazy guy, uh, the intent is to punish him, torture him, and kill him for supposedly having slept with his wife on a one night stand. So the movie is sort of like that. It's like a kidnap torture torture movie. Um, and he does. <laughs> you know, he does. The three actors, you know, Ryan and his two kidnappers are phenomenal in this movie. Ryan is still... He's such a wonderful... I mean, Ryan Felipe is really a wonderful actor. I, I like, I've got, he's got his own little section over there. Um, I think I fell in love with him, you know, with Cruel Intention with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Um, 
another name that an actress or an actor has came out and said they didn't like the way people pronounce it. I always called her Sarah Michelle Geller when she was in Buffy, you know, but um, it turns out that she pronounces her name Gellar, not Geller. So I try to use, I mean, it is their name, yeah? So I try to like pronounce it the way they say their name is pronounced. So I've called her Sarah Michelle Gellar now for years, but he was in Cruel Intentions with Sarah Michelle Gellar. That's where I first saw him and a movie called Little Boy Blue, where I fell, that's the two movies that I fell in love with him in. And um, so I was really excited to see what he would do on his own, writing, directing, and starring in a movie. And it is phenomenal, this movie. So what's interesting about it is, you know, the guy doesn't want to just kill him. So this idiot has to go to work every day. And he leaves his friend, this other guy, or his nephew or cousin or whatever he is, he leaves him alone to guard him. Well, this guy is crazy in a whole different way. Okay, he is in love with Ryan Philippe. And I guess Ryan being, uh, or I'm sorry, the character that Ryan's playing, I guess him uh, being a straight character, um, he didn't like really get that at the beginning. And he not only did he not get it, but he didn't factor it into how the fuck am I going to get out of this situation. Now, if it had been me in that situation, well, I wouldn't have been in it because I wouldn't have cheated with a guy's wife. But if you if you switch up the roles and say it was a husband or something, if I was in that position, I would have began using that guy's obvious love of me to my advantage way before this character did. But, you know, you have to give him some credit. He's a straight guy. I didn't really, you know, once he did realize, oh, my God, this guy wants me um, is obviously gay and wants me um, how can I use that to get the fuck out of here before this this crazy guy cuts me up <laughs> and, and feeds me to the gators which was the plan now there is a lot of creepy scenes uh, the friend that is in love with him I, the way that they let you know it I mean he does act kind of a uh, giddy schoolgirl kind of like you know or schoolboy kind of like uh oh you're my crush kind of way he does act that way a little but you don't really like get it until there's this really creepy scene where they zoom in on the cabin and he's standing outside buck naked masturbating peeking through holes at Ryan tied up on the bed in there and you're like oh okay I get it oh wow well that's uncomfortable <laughs> hey wait a second he's hot for me I think I can dig I, I think I can use this to my advantage and when when Ryan's character figures that out he does start using that to his advantage because you know I mean my first thing would be like okay this is actually good <laughs> this is actually good because if he's gay and he wants me I might can get my ass out of this situation by playing it up and he does start trying to do that you know and um, doesn't work out quite the way he wants to but, uh, yeah, and that's an ugly scene as well. But he finally does, you know, do what he should have done to try to get loose. Now, you have to remember, this guy that wants to kill him, he's going to work all day long and leaving this, this dude to watch him. And I'm not sure he's aware, because I'm telling you, if I was aware that the my cohort was in love with that with our victim with our 
you know, I'm not really sure I would trust them to go to work and leave him alone with my prisoner that I want to torture to death over a period of weeks before I feed him to the gators. I'm not going to leave, you know, it's just not going to happen <laughs> because I'm not going to trust the situation, you know. It's like if, if the situation was reversed and you kidnapped Madonna or something like that, uh, you know, you're not going to leave. I'm, I wouldn't leave my heterosexual guy with a crush on Madonna along with her while I went to work. That doesn't make a lot of sense because ain't no telling what could go on while I was gone. And I want to, you know, I have my plan. So that wouldn't work out very well. So that was an interesting aspect of the movie. The cinematography is great. Um, there is a really particularly nasty scene with a gator that you would have to see. That was pretty bad. <laughs> that was pretty bad. So, whereas, you know, my horror movies, you know, my horror movie range... I love action horror, I love sci-fi horror, I love um, killer kids, I love um, psychological horror, I love paranormal horror, is kind of like low on my list, um, but I also love like person-on-person -person horror, you know, I guess this would qualify as psychological kidnap torture horror, you know, because that's what it is, you're being put into a very very scary situation because let me tell you these two guys uh, well the one that was in love with him wasn't really scary but he was a psycho as well they were just different kinds of psychos um, but the, the guy that kidnapped him the guy that wanted to torture him now that was a total complete psycho so yeah you're kidnapped and being tortured uh, by a psycho who has made it very clear yeah, that his plan is to make you suffer very, very greatly and then cut you up and feed you to the gators. So you are definitely in a horror situation. And um, if you haven't seen it, you really should. I think he did a phenomenal job um, directing this movie. And I think he did a phenomenal job acting in it. And let me tell you, uh, Ryan Philippe has aged very 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 well okay don't ever doubt it <laughs> Ryan Philippe is aged very well and he and it, it's proven in this movie trust me buy it get it um, he is absolutely oh well okay wait I'm seeing something that I guess I didn't pay attention to from the producer of Saul you know what? That explains a lot. <laughs> I don't know why I never... I guess I just never pay attention to the back of the box. But it says, From the producer of Saw. Yeah. That explains. That explains some things. Because that was definitely a torture house. You know, that little cabin. And that's another thing I don't think they really went into. Because, you know, this, this, this cabin didn't look like it was like someone's home. It looked like a base of operation for, for a couple fucking serial killers is what it looked like. Um, and I think there might have been a little hint that other stuff had went on. But they don't tell you, so you don't know. But, yeah, if there is... But yeah, that, that definitely explained a lot there, that it was from the producer of Saw. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Because the original Saw, this movie has a lot of the atmosphere. You know, the two guys chained up in the basement in the original Saw. That situation, that one room atmosphere that's what this movie is it's Ryan Felipe tied to a bed and 
and uh, chained up being accosted and tortured by two Louisiana Cajun psychos one of whom wants to cut him up and feed him to the gators and the other who wants to marry him uh, so it's trouble all the way around for him and uh, I think the reason he lived as long as he did though was because he did play up like I said I think the other guy the one that was in love with him he was a psycho but not that kind of psycho he was more of a kidnap a love slave kind of psycho whereas the other one was like I'm going to cut you up and feed you to the gators kind of psycho so they're, they're both psychos but for different reasons both of which are you know I think I would rather be kidnapped as a potential love slave because I could I think I could work that because where the other guy is concerned you ain't getting out of that you know what I mean that guy was going to kill him if he did not get away if he did not find a way out he was going to be cut up and fed to the gators there is zero doubt about that hell the guy beat the crap out of him like multiple times and tortured him um, so yeah he was going to go down at least if I'd been kidnapped for the other reason by the other guy I could at least work that and he does um, to stay alive until he could get his opportunity to escape yeah that's that's a lot better I mean you know because the other one there was going to be no there wasn't no talking your way out of it so if you haven't seen this you really should if you're a fan of Ryan Philippe um, you will really like it um, if you're not a fan of his still give it a watch I think you will love it 2014 Catch Hell Ryan Philippe written directed and starring Ryan Philippe so yeah from the producer of Saw and I hope you give it a chance I think you'll like it I know I did and I will hopefully be back soon with another I appreciate your time I I really love doing this uh, the problem I'm having down here is that it has rained and I'm talking storm this place used to be so beautiful Northwest Florida it used to be such a beautiful place to live and then the last 10 to 12 years um, as climate change has taken hold living here is like living in the Amazon it is so hot but it is so wet it has rained and I'm not lying you could go to the weather channel and look it up it has rained here where I live in Northwest Florida every single day for two and a half weeks every single day just a few hours ago what was it like six seven hours ago there was a thunderstorm with lightning and everything it's doing that every single day barometric pressure up sun comes out it is blistering hot and soaking wet humidity through the roof as my afro will attest to um, then four or five hours later heavy storm clouds barometric pressure squeezes your head in it's raining so your sinuses are constantly like opening closing opening closing barometric pressure up barometric pressure down <laughs> it's 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 horrible and it, it's like living in the Amazon I'm talking about the rainforest Amazon soaking wet brutal humidity hot raining all the time it's miserable it's just a miserable and it didn't used to be that way and um, it, it's it's fucked up um, so you can hear my vote my voice you know it's like I'm stuffed up I a scratchy voice stuff like that and I keep wanting I've got 1500 movies I want to go for <laughs> yeah. okay not 1500 about 65% of my collection is horror movies. 
um, of, of the varying range um, horror thrillers uh, so there's a lot of movies I want to get to and I try to yeah but I really enjoy this I love being able to do this and I hope that I introduce people I will do the big ones you know but I I try to kind of you know introduce horror fans to movies they may not have took time to watch and uh, so I try to bring in a lot of indies and stuff you may not have heard of so that you can go and check out where to watch them and have a good watch because I love them as you see I mostly buy everything I don't do digital um, so I buy my stuff that I want and yeah catch hell Ryan Philippe and I will see you in the next one scream with me every single night and I will see you later bye bye